Jeremy was an only child until he was nine. So he has all those firstborn leadership skills. Um, when, he, when his brother was born, he and I made a cookbook of all the things he could cook without having to ask permission. So he could use the microwave, but if he was hungry, he could take care of himself because he's always been independent and self-reliant. He's an Eagle Scout, uh, did very well in school. Well, uh, Jeremy liked to play the guitar, and uh, he would play all the time, but he only knew, knew a few songs. And we would hear Stairway to Heaven uh, constantly, every night, and over and over again. <laughs> uh, he wanted a Gibson, which is really, for those who know, it's a really good guitar. So uh, he uh, said, okay, well, I'll have to build one myself if I can't buy one. And he found out the kind of wood it's made from. He got the wood and he cut out a Gibson guitar that was actually playable. And to me, that was pretty amazing. He's always known what he wanted to do in most everything uh, professional. And I guess that's something we have in common. Um, we both were pretty sure what we wanted to do from the time we were kids. Now, Jeremy came along and uh, was thinking, should I pursue medicine? Then he also said, I'm, but I'm thinking about the PA program. He kind of made the choice, I think, thinking about it as a really good career path and also um, a good path for him just as a human being. Well, I remember when he was looking at PA schools because he was looking all over the country. And at the time we were here in San Diego and when he said he wanted to go to New York, I kind of choked. <laughs> and he's like, but it's the best school in the country to be a PA at. And I said, okay, all right. He worked hard, became valedictorian of his class. When asked to comment about Jeremy's time as a PA student at Stony Brook, Peter Kimmel, PA department chair, remembers, Jeremy exhibited many of the characteristics that California PAs have benefited from. A strong work ethic, a professional approach to all he did, and the innate intelligence to succeed under the most stressful of circumstances. I, and many of the other faculty, thought of him as someone who would go on to make a difference for his patients and the profession. When Jeremy finished PA school, uh, we came back to San Diego and he wanted to go into the ER. He didn't find a job in that. Um, he found a job in pain management and he was not extremely excited in the beginning, but he worked with an amazing doctor, Bill Wilson, and found that he loved pain management. For me, it was really wonderful because being in a solo practice and having someone to interact with and I was interacting with a peer. I first met Jeremy. Um, he was the president of the San Diego PA Association, and I was a new PA. And I asked him how to make, um, how to improve my compensation. Uh, he said, come work with us. I can't thank him enough for uh, opening my eyes to a you know, different area of medicine that I had never thought of. That's probably when I started to enjoy the practice uh, a whole lot more than I had before. Jeremy serves on the editorial board of Pain Medicine News. Editor Donald M. Pizzi says, Jeremy is a tireless advocate for PAs and individuals living with the burden of chronic pain. His professional dedication is truly remarkable. We are proud to call him a colleague and a friend. I can tell you that Jeremy and what he has done in his career has made him the penultimate, the expert. He is the expert in pain management. There's no question about it. Jeremy, what made you pick pain management? He said, Mom, it was called a job. So it wasn't like that's what he wanted, but that's exactly where he needed to be. He has um, flourished in this environment. Jeremy uh, has always focused on outcomes and how to improve the patient's uh, quality of life. Uh, most of my career, of course, has been here in San Diego. About uh, two years into it, I had a colleague say, well, have you heard about this PA society? I'm like, what PA society? And, and so I went, went to one of the first meetings and met Jeremy. And that meeting slowly went from like four to 50 to 100, I think up over 500 people on our roster now. It always kind of amazed me how much you know, effort and work he put into doing the PA society. In 2008, CAPA created its Controlled Substances Education course in response to AB3. Jeremy's help in developing the course content raised the educational bar significantly. P.A. Adler and Dr. Lowe have taught over 52 courses, with students totaling over 7,000 to date. In 2011, 
Kappa leaders invited Jeremy to run for a position on the Kappa Board of Directors. He ran for Kappa Vice President and won. His leadership style was refreshing, and Jeremy brought the Kappa Board to a new level of strength and sophistication. So Jeremy came to Kappa leadership at a really challenging time for Kappa, and the leaders were um, perplexed at what to do. He walked in the room, he showed his leadership capabilities, and we trusted him. And because we trusted him, we had the courage to do things and handle the situation like we'd never handled anything before. And he kept us on track, and he led with example. And, and that really changed the dynamic of the board. Well, I started uh, back in the early 70s when this profession was really a lot different than it is now. And I think Jeremy recognizes that and, and wants, to, <clears throat> wants to pull us into a, a kind of a new era uh, for our profession. In, in California, he's really the leader uh, to, to, to what we call optimal tea practice. And uh, so it's going to be him that's going to bring California PAs into this new, new realm of, of, of what PAs can, can be, where, where PAs can practice at the uh, highest level of their, uh, of their license. I was looking for some help in my practice and Luckily, Jeremy uh, was available, and he came to me with 10 years experience in the pain management field, which was a wonderful background, and not something that I typically expect from uh, most physician assistants, uh, PAs or nurse practitioners that I've worked with in the past. So I was very lucky. From the get-go, I knew that I had something really good. Uh, I have a general rule in life that I like to surround myself with people smarter than I am, and he fits that to a T. Jeremy has been working hand in hand with me since 2012. Um, we've been collaborating on many, many cases together, complicated patients in the pain world, and sharing ideas. It's always been extremely stimulating. So Jeremy's just very gifted. I mean, what makes him different is that, number one, he's so damn smart. Secondly, he's so good with patients. Uh, he's one of those like really intellectual people that really likes other people and that's a rare combination. Part of his brilliance is what he brings to um, the table as a whole person. He's, he's compassionate, he's caring. Jeremy is a thinking man. And not only is he a thinking man, he's a thinking man who is brave. He's not afraid to ask the hard questions or make us kind of expand how we address an issue or, or our concepts. He doesn't, he doesn't let us get stuck. As a leader, he's that fabulous combination of being um, very serious about the issues, but not serious about himself at all, doesn't take himself seriously, which is both um, makes you kind of want to go along with him and kind of invites you to, to um, be part of whatever he's up to. But I know he's a tremendous dad, and I know he's a tremendous family person because he talks about them all the time when we're together. I like the times when my dad and all of the rest of us are engaged together, doing homework, he's doing his work, or other stuff, we're all like typing, and it's like kind of quiet, but then sometimes we're talking. And... My dad works hard, but we still, he still makes time for us, and we have a lot of fun together. For our family, it's not just his career, it's, we're, we're part of the PA profession in our mind. We hear about it all the time, and we're He's bouncing ideas off of us, and um, that's something that Jeremy's always done. We, we don't tend to talk down to our kids. We involve them in our conversations and get their opinions, and they'll say, what do you think about this, boys? And, and they'll tell him what they think, and he'll consider it and have a good conversation. In 2012, Jeremy worked with the Department of Justice to bring a DOJ representative to the Kappa conferences to encourage and facilitate PA's enrollment in the CURES system. Over 400 PAs signed up at the 2012 and 2013 Kappa conferences. Jeremy is a fierce advocate for the PA profession and is often called upon to present comments and testimony. Getting Jeremy in front of the right group often changes the perception and trajectory of the PA profession. We worked on um, several different pieces of legislation over the years, but the one that really stands out, the one that we really um, kind of crossed all kinds of barriers and hurdles on was SB 337 and um, many many late nights early mornings of going over language with Jeremy with Jeremy with Jeremy <laughs> um, uh, I don't even know how many hours we spent on that but uh, really what I'd like to say is it was such a pleasure to work with him he um, he's so smart he knows the PA 
profession better than probably anybody I know. He gets it, he gets the minute details of it, and he gets the big picture of it. And it's been a very exciting time over the last year. We've had a very important piece of legislation, SB 337, pass. And as a result, though, this brought up a lot of discussions about PAs, about our profession, and who we are. Having Jeremy at Kappa's helm provided direction and motivation to move toward future goals. In October of 2015, past president, PA Bob Miller, presented Jeremy with a framed photo signed by Kappa leaders, thanking him for his stellar leadership and commitment to the PAs of California. Consistent throughout all of Jeremy's presentations and actions is the intent to raise the professionalism of PAs. In 2016, Jeremy led the way for a California resolution at the AAPA House of Delegates to establish a PA surname as the recommended address for PAs. The resolution was adopted, making PA the honorific for PAs across the nation. Jeremy broke through another barrier in October of that same year by creating a long sought after pathway to educate key stakeholders about PAs. He was invited to speak at the California Medical Association's House of Delegates. The message was clear and relevant, and the response from physicians was encouraging. Jeremy caught the eye of AAPA leaders and staff who had watched him rise as a prominent leader in California. Jeremy has been invited to serve on several AAPA workgroups and encouraged to run for a national board position. In August 2017, at the Kappa Conference in San Diego, Kappa introduced optimal team practice to those in attendance. Jeremy serves as chair of the Optimal Team Practice Task Force in California. The Pride of the Profession Award is Kappa's highest honor. It's not given every year. It's only been given, Jeremy will be the sixth person in Kappa history to receive the award. So it's a, it's a very high honor to do this. And it's, it's not for one thing. It's, it's for many, many years of contributing to the PA profession in California. The way the recipients are chosen is by past uh, awardees. Jeremy certainly, uh, certainly deserves it. He's, uh, he's been such a leader of leaders. Uh, he's, he's gone through different, different uh, positions in, in Kappa and, and has really shown his ability to, uh, to help us other leaders uh, try to uh, uh, be goal-oriented and, and set, uh, set goals that we, can, uh, that we can achieve. Jeremy is honest. If you ask Jeremy a question, he will give you an answer. Uh, he's not about himself. It, this is not about me at all. He always is concerned about the other person and gives a lot of himself. He deserves the award without question, and I would love to see him catapult that into a much more rigorous position with the Academy on a national level. He should be president one of these days of AAPA because he certainly has the credentials and the ability and the personality and all the rest of it. He could do a wonderful job and I'm very proud of him. Thank you, Jeremy. Your passion for the profession and for California PAs has reignited my passion for the profession and I love you forever for that. Thank you. Jeremy, there's no one more deserving than yourself in terms of getting an award that should recognize how fantastic you are in every possible way, in personal, family, practice, life, healthcare uh, policy, publications, academics, you do it all. You are fantastic, you're a rock star, keep it up. I'm just happy to be a part of this. I know that uh, your mom has spent a lot of time as I have with you over the years and we hope uh, that you uh, thought it was worthwhile and I know it's worthwhile. I can tell by what's happened to you. And we are, we have an independent, strong, committed person, and uh, I love you, and hopefully we'll see more exciting things in the future. It's just been a joy having you as our son, and, and watching you mature and grow into the man that you are. We couldn't be more proud. Love you. Congratulations, Dad. Uh, I love you so much, and I'm proud of you that you're getting this award. Um, thank you, Dad. You've been such a great role model in my life, and I hope you really enjoy getting this award. Jeremy, we're so proud of you and so excited, so proud that you won this award. You've worked so hard over the years, accomplished so much for PAs, and this is amazing. We're excited and know that you have so much more you want to do. We love you. So Jeremy, I know that this is something of a, a Lifetime Achievement Award, but I don't want you to think of it that way because we need more. 
of what you bring to us. Thanks so much.